friends now we'll talk about the data center switches it is very much important that we know the details of these models like chassis m series f series modules supervisor engines and the features we'll make a comparison between different uh, modules different chassis and supervisor engines because uh, these are very much uh, dependent on the features we use so we have to pick the right device all right so you'll probably get into many uh, situations wherein you'll have to find out the device or model which suits your requirement okay so right now you can see that uh, it is mentioned data center switches and uh, i'm covering these devices from vendor named cisco very popular vendor so how would you reach into this site uh, just go to your browser type in cisco.com slash go slash nexus it is very easy to remember okay so you should always open this website to know about the various models all right so just scroll down here is the main thing find the best data center switch for you so the latest series that we have is 9000 series it is uh, these devices basically have support of aci application centric infrastructure so aci is basically a cisco's uh, software defined networks okay sdn cisco's sdn this course doesn't have any lecture with respect to aci so i'll not go into the detail of this okay so i'll uh, i'll basically cover 7000 series 5000 series and 2000 okay so in this particular lecture which i am speaking right now i'll go into the detail of chassis of nexus 7000 series i'll make comparison of it just click over here now you have got into uh, 7000 series switches okay so in this uh, series we have two sub series okay uh, 7000 and 7700 models okay so 7700 is the latest and advanced in this class you can say that uh, this is how these models uh, these chassis look like this one is uh, 7018 this one is i believe uh, if you count it it will be 7010 series okay and this is how your 7700 switches look like so if you just scroll down you will see some bullet points like the uh, various uh, slots how much the bandwidth per slot and same is the case for nexus 7700 but to be able to get clear picture you have to click on this uh, this option view models comparison just click over here now a page has opened up wherein means you will be able to see what differences are between different chassis so there are uh, there's one section supervisor then there's m series f series input output module chassis okay so 7000 uh, is a modular chassis modular means it will have modules it is not a standalone you can load your input output module into that okay so these are uh, these can be uh, detached or attached that's what i want to say so i'll just uh, click on the chassis section first okay so i'll talk about chassis in this lecture and uh, then supervisor in the next lecture i'll talk about m series and f series so let's talk about chassis first okay so if i talk about 7000 series there are four chassis in that okay first one is 7004 then 9 then uh, 10 one this one 10 this is 18 okay so you may go into the detail of these after clicking but i'll not do it right now i'll just tell you the uh, differences okay and then there are there is 7700 series 2 model 6 10 and 18 so what is the naming convention if if someone says that i have a switch of a 7009 model that means that there are nine slots available okay so 
if it is a 7010 that means it has 10 modules 18 means 18 modules so this one is 7702 it means two modules only it will be small in size then six and so on the first point on which we'll make comparison is supervisor redundancy supervisor is the brain of the chassis which does forwarding okay it's a forwarding engine so it will basically handle your control plane traffic so does it have a supervisor level redundancy yes this has almost all the models have it except this one so when we talk about redundancy that means we'll have will have the option to have two soup modules okay one is active second one is backup so if the chassis is of four modules in that case two will be reserved for supervisor okay so four minus two equal to two that means we will be left with two modules for connecting servers or connecting downlink uplinks to other devices so those line cards are known as input output modules okay four minus two two modules for input output similarly for nine uh, nine slot it will be seven slots for input output so i was talking about all of the models have uh, supervisor level redundancy except this one 7702 because it all it only has two slots so obviously you cannot reserve both for supervisor so what you'll have for connecting to devices so that is why it doesn't have it only one supervisor module can uh, supervisor engine can be connected or uh, module can be okay so that is why it is mentioned as one here so number of input output modules will depend how many supervisors you have even if you want to connect only one soup that is fine but second slot cannot be used for input output module right so that is a thing so like this 7718 chassis it will have so 16 input output modules also know that also remember that the module that is the input output module for 7000 series that cannot be used in 7700 chassis like these are four chassis so it will support only those modules which are which basically uh, belong to this particular model like if i click on m series module you will see there are five m series module right now which are which cisco has launched so only these these will be supported in 7000 series so if you connect this module which is the for 7700 it will not work in 7000 all right so i'm back to chassis section so uh, bandwidth per slot how much is the bandwidth this chassis will support at max for each module 440 gbps if you have 7004 series 550 gbps for 9 series and so on the latest the advanced ones are 7700 series that is why it is mentioned as 1.3 terabits per second okay it is same for all so these are really costly devices remember it so we'll talk about switching capacity what is this switching capacity it means how many uh, packets or how much uh, how many bits this chassis can handle in given period of time it is saying it can handle the first one can handle 1.92 billion bits per second okay so it has the potential to handle these many this much of data per second 1.92 tbps so if you go into the other chassis like uh, 7018 it has 17 point it has 17.6 tbps and then uh, the latest one which is 7718 it has 83 tbps it is really big in size 18 slots so uh, with regard to uh, port density means how many ports of one ge that is one gigabit ethernet port this chassis can support it can maximum support 96 ports of 1g 96 of 10g 24 of 40g and 12 of 10g 100g 
now the height that is a rack unit you know what is rack unit uh, this chassis needs to be kept in rack okay and racks are designed accordingly means every uh, switch manufacturer has to follow the standard rack size okay so that their devices can be inserted and kept there can be what do you call installed there physically okay so this says seven what is the seven seven means seven rack unit so what is the value of one ru one ru equivalent to 1.75 inches this is the height length and breadth will be as per standard this is the height so it will it will be 7 into 1.75 so i'll click over this 7 into 1.75 inches so this switch will have height of 12.25 so this switch needs this much of space okay so when you have uh, 18 chassis like 7018 series so ru will be 25 into 25 into 1.75 inches so 43.75 is the height of this switch you have to you have to have this much of space in order to keep this switch in the rack okay the other important thing is uh, airflow see these devices really generate a lot of heat okay so you need to have proper uh, airflow so when you have 7004 series the airflow will be side to rear that is it will end the air will enter from side and exit from rear that is the back end for 7009 series it will be side to side for 7010 series front to back the air will enter from front and exit from back uh, 18 series side to side and 7700 2 series front to back so if you want to see that uh, picture of these devices just uh, click and see this is a 7004 series okay because this uh, complete course is of uh, Cisco Nexus devices so that is why we have to log in into their site to see because I can't have my own pictures right so just click over here see you can even zoom it uh, this is this is first supervisor engine module second line cards okay close it so if you go into the data sheet you can see um, it gives you all of the information like it sports 1 10 14 uh, 40 and 100 g ethernet interfaces okay 1.92 tbps of switching capacity that is this switch is capable of handling 1.92 terabit per second of data to scale the future future growth okay so this is a modular means there are modules these can be detached these can be attached go into the detail you want to go into the uh, detail like uh, of this switch so it also supports OTV, Lisp, MPLS features okay so I'll go and go back similarly if you want to see the 7010 series picture just click and see and if you want 3d model view just click on this section you will get a 3d view okay so this was the comparison uh, of chassis these are the chassis i haven't talked about modules yet i'll talk about it in the next section so it has basically two categories of modules the input output module one is m series f series these are uh, specific to features which one you want to use you have to uh, go into the detail in the next lecture i'll cover okay so supervisor uh, engine so first one they mentioned as 7700 sup 2e so this sup 2e will only work in 7700 it will not work in 7000 okay this one was the older sup 1 then sup 2 of nexus 7 uh, 7k sup t 2e of nexus 7k you can see the cpu dual core xeon this one is quad core because this is the latest advanced okay speed this is the frequency how much memory does this uh, this 7700 uh, sup 2 is 32 
flash memory is uh, USB based and this one will have compact flash so how many VDCs can be created VDC is uh, basically virtual context means you can physical uh, logically divide a chassis into uh, multiple chassis logical multiple chassis okay so when you have uh, 7700 sup 2e then you, you can have nine vdcs in total one will be reserved for administration okay uh, in my videos you will see the first one sup 1e sup 1 sorry okay it will have four chassis including admin so if you have sup 2 in your office then you will see four plus one one for yourself and four for uh, others like uh, uh, other customers or your own uh, project okay similarly 8 plus 1 8 plus 1 so how many facts facts are basically uh, devices standalone devices which will not have its own CPU or brain it will use the brain of the parent switch where it's connected so how many facts can be connected it is saying the latest 7700 2e will have 64 I'll talk about facts. I have many lectures in this and similarly this CMP is a connectivity management processor to it's basically a alternate way of uh, controlling the device. It is not supported in these three and only first one the oldest one have it. Okay, this one is this one was a comparison of uh, supervisor engine modules. Okay, so what did you learn in this i talked about 7000 series wherein there are two subcategories 7000 and 7700 so i showed you the comparison between 7000 and 7700 chassis okay the, like the name, naming convention says when the version is 7004 it means four chassis two for supervisor module two for input output okay every so every chassis has support for supervisor level redundancy okay except 7702 for obvious reasons so bandwidth per slot will be 440 gbps this much is uh, it can support for each slot switching capacity how much data it can handle 1.92 billion bits per second which is 1 tbps number of ports uh, you can make uh, you can just see the comparisons okay airflow is very important thing for uh, 77 uh, 18 it is front to back and you can see like side to side for 7018 okay rack unit is the height multiply it by 1.75 inches you will get the height of means how much space you need to have in order to keep the switch in your data center and uh, supervisor four models three for 7000 and one for 7700 one 22e for 7000 okay and this one is 7700 you cannot mix these all right so uh, earlier few lectures will be theory based it is important very important because these are very critical devices you cannot simply configure it unless you know whether these devices support the features you want or uh, various things so i hope it's been informative to you thank you so much